so glad to see you today. We reach out and shout out, give a shout out to those who cannot attend but will be listening to the recording. Thank you for listening to this recording. We thank you for those of, us, those of you who are live with us at the online church. It's a church that's making a difference in people's lives. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We don't boast of great numbers, and I'm glad about that. But wherever two or more are gathered in the name of Jesus, there God is in the midst. If any two of us gather in the name of Jesus, he's right there. Praise God. And so we worship you, and we, we worship God, and we thank you for coming to the online church. Praise God. Give a shout out to Terry out in Loveland, Colorado. Jackie. Fisher over in Kentucky, Ryan up in Pennsylvania, my uh, niece Waynette in Pennsylvania, Katz in Cincinnati, Jackie in Augusta, Georgia, and uh, we thank God for so many people. Praise God. Give a shout out to Bishop Elijah in Kenya and uh, Governor and all those people who will be listening to this recording Give a shout out to people all over the world, hallelujah, and across this nation. Give a shout out to our YouTube friends and our Facebook friends. And we thank God. We thank you that we thank our God for many of you who attend your, your regular church and then you listen to these recordings later on. Praise God. And you're getting strengthened by the Holy Spirit. Praise God. We thank God that God is raising up a church that is without a spot or wrinkle, a church that loves one another. Praise God. No denominational, denominational distinctions, no separation. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. Praise God. We are the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. We come in different colors. We come in different sizes. We come in different complexions. We live in different neighborhoods. But we have one thing in common. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. He's our Savior and our Lord. And the Holy Spirit lives in all of us. Hallelujah. And God loves every one of us. He's no respecter of persons. And so we come before God this morning in the name of Jesus. And we give thanks. Hey, we've got a great message today. We've got a message today. It might not be a popular message I sent out uh, messages all over the, the, the nation uh, this week to join us in the online church as we pray for our president. Praise God. Praise God. We're going to pray for our president. And, and we're going to look at why we need to pray for our president. And we're going we're to look at not what, what the pol politicians say, but we want to look at what God says about it. We're going to show you in God's word what he says about praying for the president and for all who have authority over us. So praise God. This is the online church. We preach Jesus Christ, ladies and gentlemen. We do not politic. We do not preach the, a Republican Party platform or a Democratic platform or an independent platform. We preach what the Lord says in his word. Praise God. You know, God's going to hold us accountable, ladies and gentlemen. Whether you're a preacher or a teacher or a prophet, evangelist or an apostle or a Sunday school teacher or a housewife or uh, the head of a household or a homemaker, God is going to hold us accountable for what we do with his word. Hallelujah. It's the word of God that's going to change lives. And so, bless the Lord, oh my soul, we're going to be... Um, um, praying for our president today. We're going to look at a great hear a great message as the Holy Spirit brings it forth. And hey, let's uh, we're going to ask Jackie Fisher to get ready to read the scripture. Uh, we do the, do it this in this order. We're going to ask Ryan to pray and then Jackie to read the scripture. The scripture is from First Timothy two one to four. So you might want to download or open up your Bible now to uh, First Timothy First Timothy two. Verses 1 through 4, then we're going to ask our, our brother, our friend, hey, that great man of God in Marysville, Pennsylvania, Ryan Trogler, to, to come and lead us in prayer. Pray with him. Prayer is so important. Lead us in prayer. Will you please, Ryan? Uh, morning, Pastor. Morning, Church. Yes, I will lead, you in prayer, lead everybody in prayer today. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for making another beautiful day today. We want to thank you for providing all of our needs. Lord, we want you to 
down and give uh, give the pastor uh, wisdom and knowledge to teach us your word again today. And we should be reading it every day. Uh, Lord, we just want to pray for all the sick. Please heal, please heal them. We also want to pray for do pray for our president and, and the entire government and everybody who's inundated by the floods and tornadoes. Just help, help them and heal them and give them the help that they need, Lord. And we come to you in Jesus' Christ's precious name. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Brother Ryan Trogler. Thank you, uh, Brother, for the prayer. And, and God hears our prayers. The Scripture says, Ryan, whatsoever things we desire, when we pray, He hears us. And if we know that He hears us, we know that we have the petitions that we desire of Him. So the, min the moment we begin praying, we believe that God hears us. And if we know that He hears us, then we know that we have the answers to the prayers. He's going to answer our prayers. So we thank God. We thank God for Ryan. Ryan is growing in the Lord. One day, Ryan will be leading many people to the Lord. We just bless God. And, and he's a great teacher, uh, a great student, <clears throat> and he loves the Lord. And we're just um, waiting for the, the, the report, the shout-out report coming out of Ryan's household from his wife, Tara, when she gets her healing and her eyes are healed. We thank God for that. It's happening. It's happening right now, Ryan and Tara. It's happening, and we know God is not going to... Uh, pass by your household. The songwriter said, While on others thou art calling, do not pass me by. God knows your needs. God knows what you need. God knows what the Fisher household needs. God knows what the Chiquito household needs. God knows what the Cox household needs. God knows what, what cats needs. God knows everything. So make your petitions to him and ask, and it shall be given. Seek. Ye shall find, knock, and the door shall be open unto you. Praise God. Ryan says she's improving every day, and we're giving God the glory. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Some sicknesses are healed by miracles. Some are healing through the healing process. But when you ask God in the name of Jesus believing, when you lay hands on the sick, in the name of Jesus believing, when you apply that prayer cloth, that anointed prayer cloth, uh, claiming uh, uh, Acts, 12, Acts 19, 11, and 12, <clears throat> God is going to move. So let's learn how to wait on the Lord. And while we're waiting, give Him praise. Give Him praise. Give Him glory. Give Him honor. Hallelujah. Praise God. We thank God. We thank God. We thank God. Hey, let's ask uh, Mrs. Jackie Fisher, Sister Jackie Fisher, to come and read the scripture for us today and read along with her. Well, good morning, church. Good morning, Pastor Carter. Bless you. I praise the Lord and bless his holy name. As I read uh, 1 Timothy 2, 1 through 4, prayer and sobriety. I exhort, therefore, that first of all, Supplications, prayers, and intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all good godliness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. That's First Timothy 2, 1 through 4. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jackie Fisher. Thank you, Jackie Fisher. She read to us the scripture from First Timothy chapter 2, 1 through 4. And, and we see in this scripture, we have a responsibility to pray for those who have authority over us. We have the responsibility. And you know, when people do not maintain that responsibility, all kinds of negative things happen. I was looking at the news this morning, and today is the 30th anniversary of the Tiananmen situation in China. You'll say, what's Tiananmen? Yeah, well, that's what a lot of people are saying. What's Tiananmen? Tiananmen is when the government opened the tanks and the guns and blew away a whole lot of people who were protesting in China 30 years ago, and they were protesting. They wanted democracy. 
They wanted democracy. And the government slaughtered a whole lot of them. And now you hear very little about Tiananmen. And in China, you don't even hear the name because the government erased the name from the news media. The government controls the media. And they have the people uh, thinking that that situation never existed. Ladies and gentlemen, if we do not pray for those who have authority over us, this nation can experience the same thing. It was in the 1930s when Nazi Germany, uh, the Nazis came into power. Adolf Hitler was elected. He was elected by the people, ladies and gentlemen, and very shortly he closed down churches. He arrested people like Diedrich Bonhoeffer. He burned Bibles. He burned books. He killed off preachers and prophets, apostles, evangelists, and missionaries, and, and then declared Germany to be God, a God-free nation. In other words, they said, uh, we are gods ourselves. We are the Superman. They began to take the Nietzsche uh, uh, theory and apply it to themselves. We are our own gods. And they kicked God out of the nation before long. Before long, they began uh, killing the Jews who were God's chosen people. And before it was all over, they slaughtered 12 million Jews, ladies and gentlemen. And they kicked out the church. They killed anyone who had anything to do with Christianity. And the people were left helpless. Many prayed. Many had to go into hiding. Many were slaughtered, ladies and gentlemen. And, and, and what did America do? <clears throat> Nothing. What did Great Britain do? Nothing. What did France do? Nothing. What did the, the leaders of the church all around the world do? Nothing. Nothing. N-O-T-H-I-N-G. They let it happen. They watched it happen. Ladies and gentlemen, the church, what did the church do? Nothing. The church sat and watched things happen and, and did not petition God, did not organize, did not cry out to the Lord. And before long, Germany took over Czechoslovakia, uh, uh, Yugoslavia, Poland, uh, uh, took over all of southern Europe. And then, uh, uh, before long, uh, Germany <coughs> invaded France, and World War II began, and then they declared war against Britain, and declared war against the United States, and declared war against Russia. And ladies and gentlemen, you, we had a mess like we've never seen before in this world. And the church, because the church went to sleep. The church, I'm talking about the Christians, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not talking about the church, the church members. I'm talking about believers, blood-washed believers. They said and watched and did nothing. They ignored this scripture. Jackie Fisher, they ignored this scripture. The Bible says in 1 Timothy 2, 1 through 4, I exhort, therefore, that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. For kings and for all that are in authority. That does not just mean you pray for your government here in America. You pray for all rulers, all nations, all kings, all prime ministers, all dictators, all who are in authority. <clears throat> you don't pray that their agenda agendas be, be successful, but you're praying that God will have his way in their lives. Ladies and gentlemen, when the church sits still, when the church does nothing, that means Satan can do anything he wants to do, and he's proved it over and over again. And before long, you had people slaughtered in Nazi Germany. We, we, millions of people were killed in the world. Before long, Japan was in uh, as a partner with Nazi Germany. Italy was in as a partner with Nazi Germany. And then the United States... When we were in, came into the war, we found ourselves fighting a, a, a two-pronged front in Europe and in Asia. And ladies and gentlemen, it took everything we had to win that war. It took everything that there was to, to preserve democracy and the democratic way of life because the, the uh, atrocious uh, uh, Nazis and the, the uh, fascists in Italy 
and 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 the the the, the uh, Japanese, uh, their corrupt em, em, empirical government wanted to destroy. And so, and ladies and gentlemen, the thing is, when I look at Tiananmen today, 30 years ago, all those Chinese who were slaughtered, and the church did nothing. The church did nothing. You know, one of the things that grieves me here in America is if it doesn't affect America, it doesn't matter to the church. Ladies and gentlemen, keep on thinking that way. And one day we're going to wake up, and, 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 and I'm not calling this in existence, but one day we might wake up and find ourselves in the situation that a lot of people have been in, and we did not care about them. We did not even seek God. And so the scripture says once again, I exhort therefore. That's a commandment. Exhortation is a commandment. I exhort therefore. Yes, Paul is writing this to Timothy, but Paul is writing under the unction, the anointing of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is directing Paul to write this to Timothy so that Timothy can share this with the pastors and share this with the church, the body of Christ. I exhort, therefore, that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings, and for all that are in authority. For, for that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. It is God's will that all people be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. 1 Peter 3, 9 says, uh, uh, God is, not, is long-suffering, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But repentance is, is a two-way street. God will forgive, but we've got to repent. God will forgive, but we've got to repent. Some people can't repent because they have not heard the gospel. They don't believe the gospel. The scripture says, how can they hear unless they have a preacher? And how can they preach unless they are sent by God? And, and I'm praying in, uh, in the name of Jesus that God will stir up every preacher, whether they're in this nation or in any nation. Stir up the preachers to preach the word of God. Stir up the preachers, God, to preach what thus saith the Lord. Not what the preachers write out on Saturday night. Not their favorite essay. Not what's going to tickle the ears of the people. Not what they think the people might want. But help the preachers, God, to stay before the Lord and to hear from God. Help Help the preachers to be like Habakkuk, to quiet themselves down and to go into the presence of the Lord, to go into the secret closet and to ask the Lord, what does he want to say to the people? That's how you get sermons, ladies and gentlemen. That's how I get my sermons. I stay before the Lord, ladies and gentlemen. Praise God. Now, I must confess that, that this sermon was triggered by a message sent out by Franklin Graham this week. Franklin Graham, God used him to touch the hearts of a lot of pastors this week. And Franklin Graham sent out on May 28th this news, this, this, this uh, press release. And he said on June the 2nd, which is today, we ask that pastors would lead their congregations in praying for the president that Sunday schools and other groups would join together and pray, and that individuals and families across the country would have a special focus on praying for the president that day. That's what, Bill, that's what Franklin Graham, the son of Billy Graham, said. He asked pastors to, to pray for the president. Now, those pastors who heard this and, 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 and are in obedience uh, uh, will do this. And, 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 and once we hear the call, once we know that, that is God speaking through Franklin Graham, then we've got the responsibility, Jackie Fisher. We've got the responsibility to go to God and say, God, what will you have me to say to our congregation? What is your will for this congregation? What do you want them to get out of this? Because if we don't do this, uh, Ryan, if we don't go before the Lord, then you know what we have? We have a, 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 a smorgasbord prayer, a smorgasbord, like the smorgasbord they have at Shady Maple in Pennsylvania, Ryan, where you can go and choose all the kinds of different kinds of foods you want. But if you seek the Lord on this matter and say, Lord, what is it you would like for us to say 
uh, to, to, to pray uh, for our president and why should we say this and what's on your heart, Lord God, then this way we get an opportunity to direct the people into the will of God. Other than that, what you have is this. You have uh, politicians uh, 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 tapping their, fam their member pastors, their Republicans tapping their Republican-associated pastors, Democrats tapping their Democratic-associated pastors, and you have a perpetuation of this political mess that we have in the nation. It, I'm sa it's sad to say this, but there are pastors who, who will do everything that the Republican Party stands for, and they preach it in their congregations. On the, on the other hand, there are Democrats, there are pastors who will preach anything that the Democrats stand for and, 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 and will not budge. They will not budge. And so what we have is a divided church, and is divided. The church today in America is divided along political lines, ladies and gentlemen, political lines. And, so, and the sad thing is, while we're playing politics and while we're hating on one another based on what someone uh, thinks politically or, or how someone is politically affiliated, Satan is laughing because Satan is causing this country to become just like Nazi Germany in the 1930s just like uh, fascist Italy in the 1930s, just like uh, the Soviet Union in the 1940s, just like Japan in the 1930s and 40s. And while we're arguing with one another, playing politics and hating on one another because of someone's persuasion or the color of their skin or where they live uh, or, 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 or what newscast they listen to, Satan is having a ball while he's destroying the nation, ladies and gentlemen. And so it's time for us, church, to wake up. It's time for believers to wake up. I know I'm getting hyper. I get hyper about this. It's time for believers to wake up and call upon the name of the Lord. Because, because while the church in America is asleep, snoring, that's what the church is doing in America. They're busy watching their news. They're busy watching CBN and TBN and ABC and CBS and, and, and this and that. And, but they're, they are snoring. They're letting, letting the news media lullaby them to death. They're letting the politicians lullaby them to, le to death, they're, to sleep. They're letting uh, the Congress, they're letting the president. And so we've got to pray that God will wake up the president, that God will wake up the Congress, that God will wake up this nation from our slumber. Because if we don't pray, ladies and gentlemen, and you see the commandment to pray in 1 Timothy 2, 1 through 4, there are many pastors who do not honor this scripture. There are many believers, they don't even read it. There are many Christians who do not pray for the president. There are many leaders who do not pray for this government. But ladies and gentlemen, when you look at the matter, we are on the precipice. Franklin Graham says this. He uses the word precipice. He says, this is a critical time for America. We're on the edge of a precipice. Well, what's a precipice? The precipice is the hillside that when, when the hillside ends, there's nothing there but an abyss, an abyss, a great gulf, a black hole. We're on the edge of a precipice, Franklin Graham says, and if we don't do what we're supposed to do according to the scripture, we're all going to fall off the precipice into this black hole. You may say, well, Pastor, you're exaggerating. And I say you need to wake up and smell the roses. You need to get in the Word of God. You need to study history. You need to study your Bible. Look at the many nations who went down because they disobey God and they thought the same way uh, some people are thinking now, <clears throat> thinking that it's not serious. Yes, it is serious, ladies and gentlemen. Where is Rome today? Look at Rome today. It's nothing but a tourist attraction. Look at the Rome is nothing today but a tourist attraction, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, people go to see the three fountains, uh, three coins in the fountain. They go to uh, see the Vatican. They go to see the. But Rome used to control the whole world, but they forgot about God. Where look at Greece today? Greece is a, uh, a group of islands today. A group of islands today. 
Greece used to run the world. Ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> when you look at the kingdoms of the world, look at Israel. It used to be a powerful nation. When King David solidified Israel into one nation, he was in a position to uh, pass on to his son Solomon a powerful kingdom. But what happened? They took their eyes off God. They kicked God out. They kicked God out of their meetings. They kicked God out of their homes, out of their government. And ladies and gentlemen, the Bible says, Blessed is that nation whose God is the Lord. Righteousness upholds the nation, the Bible says. And when we turn our backs on God, when we turn our backs on people like Franklin Graham or, or pastors who are saying pray for the nation, when we kick them to the curb, then the result is a mess. And if we don't pray, we're going to be in a mess. Ladies and gentlemen, it was about 14 years ago. 14 years ago, well, at 2008, 2008, uh, actually, it was January 2009 when I did this uh, 17 years ago. Uh, 10 years, 10 years ago, 10 years ago, January in January 2009, the Lord laid on my heart start a website, start an online prayer service, and pray for the president of the United States. Ladies and gentlemen, that's what God put on my heart. He said, start a website and start a, a, an online prayer service and call the nation to pray for the president. Barack Obama had just been inaugurated in January of 2009. And I sent out that message and I uh, bought space and, this, and sent out the message, join me at a certain time. Uh, once a week we will pray for our president and, and pray. And, and they blew me off. They laughed in my face. They kicked me to the car. Jackie Fisher, they laughed. And it hurt. I'm going to tell you, yes, it hurt to see people laugh, to see Christians. Some of my pastor friends, he said, you, you lost your mind. Hey, we're riding high now. We've got a black president. And I didn't just send this out to black people. I sent it out to white folks. I sent it out to black folks. I sent it out to Hispanics. I sent it out to everybody. I said, we're going to need your prayers. And, and this president's going to need your prayers. And they blew it off. We don't need to pray. They said, we don't need to pray. And before long, eight years later, eight years later, look at the mess we were in. Look at the mess we were in, ladies and gentlemen, as, as, as that particular president who pretended to be a Christian. He pretended to be a Christian. He went to church on Sunday. He pretended to be a Christian and sold this nation out, sold this nation out to the Muslims, sold this nation out to the Arabs, gave billions of American tax dollars to the enemy, to ISIS and to other people. Ladies and gentlemen, because people blew off the call to prayer. And, and, we're, and Franklin Graham is saying, hey, hey, pray for President Trump. Pray for President Trump. And whether you like President Trump or not, if you are a true Christian, you will look at 1 Timothy 2, 1 to 4, Ryan, no matter where you are on the political spectrum, where you, what side of the fence you're on, we as believers have responsibility. Don't miss this opportunity like people missed it. Look at the things that have happened to this nation uh, since God called that prayer for Obama. Now he's calling prayer. God is calling prayer. It's not, it's not Franklin Graham calling for prayer. It's God calling for prayer for this nation. God is using Franklin Graham's voice. Hey, David Carter in, in Dubai, God bless you. Praise God. God is using Franklin Graham to wake this nation up. He says this is a critical time for America. We're on the edge of a precipice. Time is short. We need to pray for God to intervene. We need to ask God to protect, strengthen, encourage, and guide the president. We know that God hears and answers prayer. He can soften hearts and change minds. He is all-powerful, and he rules over the affairs of nations. And the Bible instructs us to pray for those in authority. 1 Timothy 2, 2 and 3 says that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and reverence, for this is good and acceptable in the sight of, our, of God our Savior. And if we don't pray, ladies and gentlemen, if we don't answer this call, 
we can wake up, we can wake up one morning and we see tanks rolling across our land. We can see airplanes with foreign insignia and inscription on them flying over our nation. Ladies and gentlemen, I have had dreams and visions of this and so have hundreds of other people throughout this nation. They've had dreams and visions of invasions. Uh, Jeep has had visions. Jeep has had warnings from the Lord. Some of you have had warnings. And if we don't pray, and I'm not talking about praying politically correct prayers, ladies and gentlemen, forget about being politically cor correct. And I'm not, I'm not going to struggle with those of you who, 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 who uh, follow everything uh, Trump does and, and believe is right. Everything he does is not right. Ladies and gentlemen, but we've got the responsibility to pray to God to use him to the glory and honor of God. And then there are a lot of people, hey, there are a lot of people, they, they're not even online with us today because I, sent, I, I announced my message, pray for the, why we ought to pray for the President of the United States. And the, the, the Trump haters, they're not even on today. Ladies and gentlemen, whether you love her or hate the man, you, what, what are you going to do about the Scripture? The Scripture says, it's a, it's a command in 1 Timothy 2, 1 to 4, pray for all who are in authority. And if you fail to pray, if you neglect to pray, and if you let bitterness enter in your spirit and you neglect your responsibility, then you are part of the problem. And one day when we wake up, we wake up, ladies and gentlemen, I've had dreams where I wake up and I walk down the, the, the street and I, I see all these soldiers in these brown uniforms and brown and red uniforms and, and they're speaking a different language and they're pointing at me and laughing. And I know that we have been invaded and overtaken. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm not the only one who's had dreams like this. There are many people who have had dreams of invasion and dreams of bombs being dropped on this nation, dreams of planes flying, dreams of uh, foreign soldiers uh, uh, parachuting on this nation, dreams of uh, people coming off ships invading this land. And yet, America sleep, the church is still asleep, the church is still trying to be politically correct. Uh, 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 because they're a faith-based organization, they won't rock the boat. They want to get that government money. And we've got a lot of, hey, ladies and gentlemen, we've got a lot of pastors out there. They're what we used to call back into in the 60s, punks. Punks. We're not talking about the punk rock people. We're talking about punks. Men and women without any backbone. People in the church in the church of the Lord Jesus Christ who have all the power of God behind them, but yet they're afraid to speak out. Many are afraid even to pray. And so this is a, an appeal, ladies and gentlemen. It's an appeal. This is not appeal an appeal for you to be politically correct. It's not appeal an appeal to you. Uh, uh, I really don't care what you, what you think about politics, ladies and gentlemen. I, I'm not going to mess with your politi political persuasion because I know, I know, I know, based on experience, there's nothing a person can do about a person's political persuasion, and that includes church people, especially uh, church leaders and church people. But I, I, I beg you, I beg you to read that scripture that Jackie... Fisher just read. Go over that scripture again, 1 Timothy 2, 1, 4, and obey the voice of the Holy Spirit. Obey the voice of the Holy Spirit and say, Lord, what will you have me to do? What would you have me to pray? And then let the Holy Spirit pray through you. Pray in the Holy Spirit. Pray in the Spirit and with your understanding. Because, ladies and gentlemen, Franklin Graham says we are at the edge of a precipice. And ladies and gentlemen, if we go over the edge, there's no return. Israel went over the edge, ladies and gentlemen, and was captured by the Assyrians, never to return. Judah went over the edge and was captured by Nebuchadnezzar for 70 years. And when they came back, they had to rebuild. Ladies and gentlemen, Rome went over the edge. Great nations went over the edge because they forgot God. Ladies and gentlemen, don't think that America is that safe. 
Ladies and gentlemen, all it takes is for the president to wake up on a bad day. Come on, listen now. All the ta- Because all the persecution he's under, all the hate that's hated against him, all the pressure he's under, it, it, it wouldn't take much for him to wake up one morning and say, later for Mr. Putin, later for uh, Jung Ho, or the guy in Korea, later for Israel, later for the United States of America, and he pushes the button. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, all the pressure on our president, ladies and gentlemen, it's a wonder he can sleep at night. But you can help him to sleep. You can help him to be in peace by praying for him. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know. I personally don't know if he's saved or not. I'm not judging, but I'm a preacher. And we're praying that all people be saved. Ladies and gentlemen, we've had a history of many presidents who said they were saved, but they were not saved. We had, uh, we've had a history of many who pretended to be Christians. And then we've had some serious Christians. They practically laughed Jimmy Carter out of the house, out of the White House, because he was holy. He loved the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, I know there are people today who wish they had Jimmy Carter back in the White House. But now we've got a president who needs our prayers. We've got a president who's unstable. Who 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 wants to do well, but he's not in charge. And you can tell by the things he's doing. He's not in charge. Those demons are attacking him day by day. And the church is sitting there waiting to see which way the, the, the cookie's going to crumble. And those faith-based pastors are waiting to see, well, uh, I'm going to go along with this, I'm going to go along with that so I can get the money. Ladies and gentlemen, pray for the president. Pray that he be stable. Pray that he know the Lord. If he's not saved, pray that he gets saved. Pray that his family gets saved. Pray for his household. Pray for the people he appoints to office. Pray the, for the people he chooses for, for offices. Ladies and gentlemen, pray that he be surrounded by godly counselors and advisors. No one man can run this country. Ladies and gentlemen, he's out there on a limb. He's out there on the edge of a precipice. And while he's standing on the edge of the precipice, we're out there with him. And ladies and gentlemen, he's very whimsical. I mean, he's he's shaky. And we need to pray for him. Pray for his stability. Pray that God will speak to him. Pray that God will keep him. Pray, pray, Pray that the will of God be done in the life of our president. And pray that God will save him and keep him and strengthen him and use him to the praise and glory and honor of God. And then pray for the Congress. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got some cutthroats in the Congress, too. We've got some cutthroats. We've got some people uh, out there to, who, who are trying to disrupt this government. We've got uh, 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 folks coming in, and they're bitter, and they're, they're full of hatred. Ladies and gentlemen, and the church is sleeping. The church is sleeping. We're busy having our potluck dinners and playing bingo, and, 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 and playing Monopoly, and, and going on our trips, and going on our cruises, going on our excursions, while the nation is going to hell. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to pray. It's time to pray, and pray. Pray for those who have the, the authority over us. Pray for the President. Pray for the Congress. Pray for the Supreme Court. Pray for the executive branch. Pray for the legislative branch. Pray for the judicial branch. Pray for governors of the states. Pray for the legislatures of the states. Pray for local governments. Pray for mayors. Pray for city councils. Pray for townships. Pray for the policemen. Pray for the firemen. Pray for all the the armed forces. Pray for all who have authority over us that they may make godly decisions and that we may live peacefully and under the ark of safety. Because if we don't pray, ladies and gentlemen, it would not be a strange thing to see a Tiananmen happen in America where 
hundreds, thousands of people are slaughtered by the military. And 30 years later, there's very little record of it because the Chinese government has manipulated the mass media to the place where China even denies that even took place. Ladies and gentlemen, look at the 12 million Jews who were slaughtered by Adolf Hitler and the Nazis. There are people in America, ladies and gentlemen, I'm talking about dummies, stupidos, El Stupido, who don't even believe that the Jews were slaughtered during World War II. They deny it. They deny the Holocaust. There are Americans who deny the Holocaust. There are Europeans who deny the Holocaust. Ladies and gentlemen, there are people in this nation who deny that there was even slavery in the United States. Ladies and gentlemen, people are redacting history. They're erasing stuff. There are people who are erasing the bad and trying to put what they think is good. And the church is asleep. The church is asleep. And the sad thing is there are people who believe all of this lying rhetoric that's coming from different sources, and we know Satan is behind it all. And God warns us in Romans chapter 1, he says, I will send a strong delusion. I will send a spirit of strong delusion that they might believe the lie. And when people don't pray, when people don't stay in touch with Jesus, when people uh, go their own way, when they kick Jesus out and don't pray, God will send strong delusion. And strong delusion means that God will allow the enemy to flood this nation with lies to the place where people think that evil doesn't even exist and evil has already engulfed the people. So let us pray for our president. Pray that God give him a sound mind. Pray that God keep him in excellent health. Pray for his wife and family. Pray that God meet every need that he has. Pray that God give him godly wisdom. Pray that God give him wisdom in his relationships with the people of this nation, in his relationship with others. Pray uh, that, that God would give him the agenda. Not the agenda that he thinks of, not the agenda that his political party thinks of, but pray that God's agenda, God's will be done in earth as it is in heaven, in the United States as it is in heaven. We've got to pray. That's our responsibility, ladies and gentlemen. That's our responsibility, intercessors. And I pray that the church will stop wasting their time trying to defend uh, President Trump or trying to defend Nancy Pelosi. I pray that the church will stop wasting its time trying to defend your political persuasion. And let's preach the word of God. Let's stand on the word of God. Let's release the word of God into the atmosphere. Let's pray. Let's stand on the word of God. And let's get this gospel out. Let's preach the gospel. Let's get people saved. Let's introduce them to the Lord. Let's encourage them to hear from the Lord. Let's encourage our leaders to hear from the Lord. And as you pray and intercede, they will hear from the Lord. But if you don't pray, if you think you're so safe and so comfortable that you don't have to pray, you're in for a great awakening. I pray that you hear this message. I pray that those of you who are listening to this message in other lands will pray for your leaders. Those of you, my friends, are in Kenya. You know the atrocities in Kenya. You know the atrocities in Uganda and Nigeria and Botswana and Zimbabwe. Ladies and gentlemen, and pray, pray to God, raise up preachers who will preach the gospel. Last week I mentioned this pastor in Zimbabwe who was selling Gold tickets, golden tickets, ladies and gentlemen, gold-plated tickets for $500 a ticket. He was selling tickets to heaven, and his congregation was raising up the money. Ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about people raising up money to buy a $500 gold ticket to go to heaven because the pastor says if you buy this ticket, you don't have to face the judgment. Come on. 
Come on, that's a lie straight from hell. Ladies and gentlemen, we don't have to believe the rhetoric that's coming out of the pulpits, out of the churches, or out of the governments. I don't care if it's the President of the United States. And ladies and gentlemen, pray that he will know the truth and the truth will make him free. Pray that he'll stop lying. They have documented thousands of lies that he's told. Pray that the President will repent of lying and teach the truth to the people. Pray for truth, justice, in God's way, not the American way. Truth, justice, in God's way. We can do this. Hallelujah. Now, if I've offended any of you, I do not apologize. I do not apologize for preaching the gospel. You go to God if you have a gripe or complaint, and you take your complaint to God and deal with God on the matter. But I tell you what, I'll leave God to tell you, just as I'm telling you, read 1 Timothy chapter 2, 1 to 4. Not only read it, but do something about it. Let's pray. Let's pray for the next couple of minutes. For the next couple of minutes, I want you to pray where you are. And I'm going to pray where I am. I'm going to lift up a prayer for the president. Okay, and you lift up a prayer for the president. And pray, pray uh, uh, for our president, for our nation. And we're going to take a couple of minutes to do this. And then when we finish praying, uh, we're going to close out and then uh, uh, entertain questions and comments. So stay on. Don't get off now. This is your time to apply what we've been preaching about today from 1 Timothy 2, 1 to 4. Let me read that again. I exhort you. I exhort, therefore, that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. It means we've got to pray for everybody, for kings and for all that are in authority, that we, we may live a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and to come into the knowledge of the truth. Father God, we come to you in the name of Jesus. Thank you for this message. Thank you for your anointing. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for directing us today. Now, Lord, we have received your word from 1 Timothy 2, 1 to 4. And, Lord, we have received the appeal that you sent out to many pastors through your servant Franklin Graham, who uh, urged us, adjured us to pray for the President of the United States. And, Lord God, we lift up President Donald Trump. We lift him up, God, as a brother, as a, as, a, as, as a man whom you've made, as a man whom you have placed in office. Whether or not we voted for him, you placed him in that office, Lord God. And, 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 and he has a responsibility to honor you, Lord God, because we know from your word that you establish kings, queens, presidents, prime ministers, and leaders. We also know that you take them down. Just as you elevate them and promote them, you take them down. Well, God, we find ourselves here in America. We have a president, Donald Trump, and we believe that uh, you allow him to be uh, in this office, and therefore he is anointed for this time. And, Lord God, uh, let him not usurp his power or take uh, advantage of this, this special calling. And, God, we don't know if he knows you or not. Some say he saved, some say, say not. I don't know, and I'm not the judge, but I'm praying that if he's not saved, that he will be saved, that you reveal yourself to him in the name of Jesus. And, Lord God, I pray that you'll speak to him, minister to his heart. Lord, our president is bombarded by all kinds of evil, and there are evil forces who are encouraging him to take this nation down, Lord God. There are evil forces uh, encouraging him to hate on others. There are evil forces encouraging him to lie and to distort the truth. And so we know that Satan's behind all this, and by the authority of the name and blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we bind Satan, we bind every power, every principality, every ruler spirit, and spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. And by the authority of the name and blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we loose the truth. We release the truth in Jesus' mighty name. And we bless you, Father, and we praise you. Now, Lord, bless and guide our president in every situation and guide our nation and cause believers to rise up, Lord God, and seek your face. 
caused there to be repentance all over the nation, from the White House to my house. We have sinned against you, God. Our leaders have sinned. We have sinned. Forgive us of our sins, God. Draw us nigh unto you. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. I pray, God, that you'll save souls from coast to coast, God, from ocean to ocean. And those who are listening in other lands, God, help them to apply this message uh, to their situation. Help them to pray for their leaders and for their people, that there be repentance in their land, that they, they will, too will receive Jesus Christ as Lord, because only Jesus can save us. So, Father, we praise you, we bless you, and thank you. We lay our petitions in your bosom, and we thank you that you hear us. And your, your word says, and if we know that you hear us, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of you. And so, Father, we pray that we live in peace in this nation and in the nations. We pray we can live in peace because we have godly leaders. Turn the hearts of the leaders to you, God. And we trust you to do this. And we bless you. Now, Lord, bless all the people online today and people listening to this uh, 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 broadcast. We pray for those who are listening to the recording. We pray that you'll meet every need they have. Draw them nearer unto you. Let them not be afraid to draw unto you. Let them not be afraid to speak the word of God and to live the word of God. And we praise you. We thank you. Fill us with your spirit today. And we bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.